everyone and welcome to the Chrissy B Show and I am Chrissy B. Now have you ever had very dry skin or patches that are abnormally irritable? Are you up in the night scratching and just making it worse? Dr Hicks to the rescue! Yes, he'll be back in the studio to give us some info on eczema and tips on how to soothe it rather than aggravate it. Now eczema tends to get worse in cold weather so as we're approaching winter it's really important for sufferers to prepare their skin. I'll also be showing you my rather adventurous co-steering Chrissy challenge from my trip in Wales and Excel here went with me for that. Do you remember that Excel? Yes, it was cold. Yeah, that's when she was jumping in the water when she couldn't even swim. She still can't swim by the way, but we're going to get there. We also have our stylist Cynthia Liza Gregoire who will be speaking about choosing a great skirt and she'll be speaking about her favourite picks in menswear. And also we have Theresa Megan Gregoire for today's makeup slot and she'll be talking about how to create the illusion of bigger eyes. Eyeshadow choices for large bright eye look and creating your own crease, lifting your lashes and where to concentrate liner and mascara. And I'll be answering a question from a viewer. But first we have the news with Excel. Hello Chrissy. Hello my darling. And hello my lovely, our lovely viewers. I've got lovely news today for you as usual. And um, today I had to hunt for some things outside of the UK as I no tried to do. No more mice in coffee cups. I know, that was lovely wasn't yeah, it? Ooh, really. Nice. Well, today's news comes from um, Germany okay. and a controversial project will see alcoholics and drug addicts giving beer, tobacco, food and small amounts of cash in return for cleaning the streets. Oh. Social workers are working closely with the participants in what they call the pickup program and they will use these alcoholics and drug addicts to collect rubbish and sweep the streets in return for one euro 25, a warm meal and three bottles of beer as well as tobacco for those who smoke. Oh dear. Yeah. Well, they look at it as they want to reintegrate severe addicts back into society. So they're starting off by giving them small rewards where they don't necessarily have to turn to a life of crime, I suppose, to sort of feed their habit. So they're, in a way, they're kind of um, looking at it as a harm minimization. And um, however- they're already addicted. Well, exactly, but they are, I suppose, not having to... I suppose it's along the lines of wanting to make, give them safe, as opposed to them putting their lives at risk. They're not actually giving them drugs. They say they're giving them drugs, although you mentioned drug addicts, but they're giving them a warm meal as well as beer and tobacco for those who, who, um, who smoke, but they're giving them beer, warm meal and some money. Okay. Um, the project participants are those who need to have a daily structure is the sort of the argument of the people who are doing it, project managers say they need a daily structure just to get back on their feet. However, critics are ra questioning the rationale, like you said, you know, they're insensitizing them with um, addicts with alcohol or with, with cigarettes. But he says the primary aim is harm reduction and um, they were able to, they're giving them weak, weaker strengths of alcohol as well. And so it, in a way, I suppose, cutting down until probably they get well, to a point of quitting. Well, the thing is, they're going to get alcohol from elsewhere. Well, the end of the day, well, I, it, it seems to be working because they're saying, you know, it's about giving them a structure as well. Because I suppose when people are bored, they tend to kind of just smoke mm. all day or drink all day. But because you're kind of giving them I'm a job. to see how, yeah. how it works out. Yeah, it, it, you know, so far it seems, I mean, it's early days, but the aim is just to kind of bring, give them some structure. And I think mm. I don't, and I don't mind really kind of could get, yeah, end up getting yeah. up to no good. So, yeah. That, that was the... Um, and when you're not doing anything, you feel down, don't you? So Exactly, and you end up, and also with alcohol, that. you know, it even make, gets you even more depressed as well after you've consumed all this. So it's just, so I, I, I think the aim of it, like I said, is a harm reduction, weaker strength beer, mm. etc. And also giving structure to them. And when they have a structure to their day, I think, you know, they're okay. less likely to. So mm. I'm hoping, it's just, it's in the early days, but um, I'm hoping it carries on working very well. Staying in Germany, um, <laughs> they're considering bringing in new laws that will make it illegal. You probably do this, Chrissy. So if this was in the UK, you'd be committing an illegal act to email work colleagues after 6 p.m. Really? <laughs> Seriously? Fabulous. Yep. It says research it says because the advent of smartphones no. has allowed us to be plugged in and able to read work emails around the clock. But well, research suggests that this is adding an extra five hours to the average worker's day. Wow. So this is why Germany are considering bringing in new laws to make it illegal to email your colleagues how after 6 p.m. How are they going to monitor that? Well, That's going to be crazy. Uh, you check your email time when it was sent. No, it was sent but after I mean, for, 6. 
Yeah, but for the authorities to monitor that, imagine, that's yeah, going to be crazy. just get IT to make sure you clock everyone who, oh, say, who yeah. dares send an email after 6pm. <laughs> the thing is, I, I send emails into the early hours of the morning sometimes, not because I'm, I expect the person to read it. All right, I, well, I don't expect you to read them. <sighs> you should be sleeping. Well, so should I, but anyway, <laughs> let's not get to that. <laughs> but the thing is, I don't expect the person to read them that time. I just mm. want to just make sure I've sent it, so mm -hmm. I know I've done it. And then obviously when the person... But you see, there no. are some people who don't switch off. You might look at it as you're just sending it because you just want to get rid of it, so you know you've done it. But there's some people be like, ping, they'll be like, oh! Yeah, I mean, I don't, because I turn my phone I off my, or yeah, I put it on silent. I put my phone so, on silent after a certain time. Once yeah, I I, but I think it's for those who, can't, who sort of can't switch off, really, because they're saying there is an undeniable relationship between constant, constant availability and the increase of mental illness, because there is I a... Think the concept is good, mm. because we do need to use our phones less and stop answering emails at every hour. But I just don't see it working in practice. I know. Again, the, the I think people would get anxious not having access and not being able to send emails. Yeah. But you see, I think also it's about giving yourself like a schedule. For example, I'm the sort of person I will say, right, I've got this to do between this time and this time. After this time, and in the, I never used to be able to do that. I was always like getting everything. I've got to do all of this at once. No. But I think when, for people who can't sort of put a schedule in their day or mm. kind of slot things, I mean, it's all well and good. As long as, even if for people who send after six or whatever, if you have a, you've got to have a, a limit to it. Or for example, people who sit on Facebook all day, for example, it's got to be structure. And I think this is sort of like putting in that structure. Because it says here that... It'll it just could be messy as well, because imagine if people that work in like, chari for charities mm -hmm. and people like that, that I mean, they're 24-7, so you can't really... Well, true. Anyway. True, but um, they're looking to make this come into force in 2016, and this would make Germany the first country in the world to pass such a law, mm -hmm. although France passed a similar legislation this year requiring workers to turn their smartphones off after 6 p.m. So I don't, it, France didn't take it as far as being illegal, but there you go. <laughs> um, I'll end this section with, um, if we still have time, I may have some mm -hmm. more, but um, a, a woman did something very um, wonderful the other day. <clears throat> She got fed up of being on the dating scene, got fed up of having uh, an other half with irritating habits. And so she decided to um, marry the person that would be with her every day of her life. And she married herself. She had a self proposal and a wedding ceremony with 50 guests. And she, um, Ooh, she proposed to herself on Parliament Hill in North London in November and she walked down the aisle alone in March. She was watched by her friends and her sister and the wedding was completed with a kiss on a mirror. She decided to take the plunge with herself after being single for six years and building up a good relationship with herself. Now that's a good point out of everything that you said, you need to build up a good relationship with yourself first. True. But not marry yourself. She said a few people commented in a light-hearted way that it was a bit narcissistic, you think? Obviously, if you've just announced you're marrying yourself, it is plainly a statement of self-love and I was under no illusion how self-indulgent that might appear. But I was completely comfortable with my motivations. I'd been on a journey of personal development and um, I focused on this and decided to make an agreement. Uh, she said she, she decided not to be focused about not staying, not having much choice about staying with herself or rather not having the choice of being with someone who's going to end up breaking up, etc. But she said, despite not having much choice about staying with herself the rest of her life, she had pre-wedding jitters. Oh, my goodness. And what does she do if she meets someone, she has to divorce herself before she marries someone else? But then she went through with it and now she feels empowered and likes it that she's no longer single. You know, it's really sad. I mean, we obviously we see the funny side of it, but it just shows the desperate measures people go to when they're lonely. She's not, I fully agree. Yes, you do have to be happy within yourself mm -hmm. and not expect getting married to make you happy although I think it makes you happier but there's got to be happy before happier exactly like said, exactly yeah exactly I think everyone needs someone 
But I and if you're not finding someone right now, right. you need to maybe change your routine or go to different places or, you know, sometimes the best kind of people to meet are friends of friends and relatives. So not marry your relatives, I mean friends of relatives, right? <laughs> okay, it's, it's something you just have to just change things yeah. that you're doing. Yeah. And it's, it's really just, sad. It's really. But she was actually. I really I, hope she meets someone. I really do hope she so needs too. To, but because she needs I to just sort herself well, up first. I, 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 because I, I found a number of reports that featured the story, and I think one of them particularly said that she's not going to put away, you know, obviously meeting somebody and having a ship with somebody if she does meet them. So okay, all right. Well, well, best of luck to her. Thank you, Excel, You're and welcome. we'll see you again afterwards. So do join us after this break. Don't forget to subscribe to The Chrissy B Show, always aiming to show you the happier side of life. You can find us on YouTube, Facebook, and Twitter. Welcome back. Now, before we talk to Dr. Rob Hicks about eczema and dry skin, let's take a look at this video revisiting a challenge that I did in Wales with Excel. Hello everybody, today I'm in Wales after a six hour drive and now I'm going to be doing something called co-steering. We're at TYF Adventures today, so um, I'm looking forward to this one. Not something that I've done before, maybe you guys at home don't know what co-steering is, but we are going to find out what it's all about. Enjoy. So John, I believe we're going to be doing something called co-steering today. What's that exactly? It's a fantastic activity. We're going to be getting down your, down into the sea on uh, the coast down here in Pembrokeshire. We're going to be jumping into the waters, exhilarating. Um, you're going to be swimming around in the water and also a bit of climbing, traversing along the cliffs as well. Now the water's pretty cold this time of year, isn't it? It's, it's, it's a little bit on the chilly side, but you don't need to worry. We've got full winter wetsuits and we've got hooded thermal tops for you to put on underneath. Uh, you'll be wearing some socks as well to keep your feet nice and warm, yeah. You'll also have a, a boing shade on to keep you nice and floaty and a helmet on as well. Well, I'm really looking forward to it. Shall we get going? Yeah. yeah. Ready to go. So we're at the point now where we're going to start the co-steering experience and I'm here with Excel. Hello, Excel. Hello. Oh, she's pretending she's not that, she's not scared. And we also have Charles here with us. Hello. How are you? Have you done this before, haven't you? I have, but not actually here. <laughs> Is it good fun or should we be scared? You should be scared. <laughs> <laughs> Are you ready to go and jump in the water? I am. I am. Let's go.
I think I've passed, John, did I pass the challenge? I think you've passed, Chrissy, well done. You know, the, the last jump was really scary for me. It took me, for, what, three times, three attempts to do it, but I finally did it, so I'm really proud of myself for doing that one. I think everyone passed it, didn't they? I think so, yeah. I think you've all challenged yourself today and done really, really well. Well done. Thank you. Yeah, Yay. another one done. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> And Rob tells me that he's going to attempt that soon, aren't you, Rob? I'm going to do that. I think I, think I would love to do that, yeah. I'm not After sure you've I, done the skydive. I don't think I'd do it as many, you know, take as few times as you did to jump in. I think <laughs> it might take me a dozen or more times to think about it before it's I did scary. it. It's scary. The one was quite scary. Yeah. I was like, oh, no, yeah. mm. managed to do it eventually, though. But we're going to talk eczema today and dry skin, aren't we? We because are, yes. Because the colder weather is supposed to be coming in, but it was quite warm today, but... And it gets worse, apparently, in winter, doesn't it? It, it does. I mean, eczema, people tend to get flare-ups in the cold weather um, because the cold dries out the skin. Okay. Um, they may get a flare-up if there are damp conditions, so cold mm. and damp. But also, when you come indoors, if you've got central heating, you come in from the cold to the warm environment, that also dries out the skin and oh. makes it you know, flaky and irritated. And what happens for many people with irritated skin is they scratch it. Mm -hmm. And that sets off what we call a, a, a scratch itch cycle. So you, you scratch, which gives you very, very brief relief of the itch, but it releases chemicals like histamine, which oh. cause more itch. So the cycle goes round and round. How can you resist the scratching, though? Well, the, like... key, the key thing with eczema is, 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 is moisturising you know, mm -hmm. uh, on a regular basis. And if your skin is itchy, if you take a, a handful of moisturiser and using the pads of your fingers, you mm. just gently massage it in like that. And that will not only uh, relieve a lot of the dryness, but it will relieve the itch. So you're okay. getting the relief without causing the potential damage. Because the other right. thing with scratching skin is you, you risk scarring, long-term mm -hmm. scarring. So that's why one of the treatments for eczema is not to scratch. <laughs> wow. Yeah. And there are different ways of doing that. So moisturising is one, mm -hmm. but also, you know, particularly with young children who, you, who find it very difficult not to scratch. So we keep their nails trimmed short, mm -hmm. and that goes for adults too. And at night time, you might want to put them in cotton mitts or even a pair of cotton socks. So if yeah. they are going to be trying to scratch when they're asleep, they're not actually digging their nails into the skin. Now, how do you know whether you've just got dry skin yeah. or you have eczema? Yeah, it's a really very, very good question. I mean, with eczema, the skin tends to be red and itchy, whereas dry skin tends to be simply flaky. It may be a little bit itchy, okay. but the, the skin is red, the skin is flaky, and the location for eczema. So you're looking at the creases, mm -hmm. elbow creases, wrist creases, you know, behind, behind the knees. That's where eczema typically appears in children and adults. Babies, they get it on the cheeks. Oh, So babies are sort of under the age of one where it first appears, yeah. they, they get it on, on the cheeks. Now, is there anything you can do to prepare, like, beforehand so maybe if it's not so bad right now but you want to kind of prepare yourself in case it does start to get bad. Yeah I mean the key is moisturising so you use a cream three or four times a day as, as often as is practical and okay. people say well how can even I... Even if you're not itchy? Even if you're not itchy. Okay. Um, lukewarm showers rather than hot showers because hot showers mm. and, or baths tend to trigger the release, the release of chemicals that cause itching and make you but scratch more. But in the winter more. time you just want to hot shower don't yeah, you? Yeah but you've got, to, you've got to try and be yeah. quite disciplined and keep it keep it lukewarm. Mm -hmm. When you come out of the bath or shower rather than rubbing the skin with a towel pat it dry because okay. again rubbing will release the, the chemicals. Keep stress under control, healthy diet and try and keep your home you know not too hot. Find it particularly with some people is they they want the heating on all the time and very very yeah. hot and that dries out the skin and the, the, the environment. Um, and avoid your triggers. If you can identify what sets you off, so maybe it's visiting granny's cat or something like that, or, you know, or then, then try and avoid that as much as you can. I mean, who's more susceptible to eczema? Well, it tends to run in families. So, so okay. the, the way that it's caused is that people are genetically predisposed, and for some reason, some develop eczema and, and others don't. So people who have other allergies like hay fever and mm. asthma, for example, and indeed food allergies, they're more likely to develop what we call a topic eczema, which is the common form of eczema. Mm -hmm. It means basically allergy prone. But there are other people who develop eczema, contact eczema, so people who work in industries where they've got chemicals 
you know, um, they're touching chemicals all the time. They may be yeah. cleaners, they may be hairdressers, um, and that causes something called irritant, contact irritant eczema. And you've got some people who have a contact allergic eczema, and they're the easy ones to diagnose to, because they're allergic to things like nickel. So you'll, you'll see their skin and they say, well, I've got these little spots here, mm. and it might be where the belt is or it may be where the studs in jeans are. So you see this okay. specific, you know, t you know, sort of distribution of the eczema. And what about sort of things like uh, shower gel and soap? Does, yeah. does that irritate yeah, it as well? Yeah, some people as well. And what we recommend for people with eczema is that you can use the emollient moisturising creams, not just mm -hmm. as as, as moisturisers, but you can use them as what we call soap substitutes. So you can use them instead of your shower gel oh. or instead of your soaps, because even some of the really mild soaps and shower gels can still dry out the skin. And this is another reason why when you come out of the bath or the shower, when your skin is still damp, mm -hmm. put on the moisturising cream, because that helps lock the moisture in the skin okay. and reduces the risk of it becoming dry. Okay, now is it true, because I was reading somewhere, that children born, is it born in October and yeah, in, oh, November, they're yeah. more susceptible to eczema? Yes, aut 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 autumn um, in particular. Um, are more susceptible to eczema. Oh, Autumn okay. and winter more susceptible to asthma. Um, mm -hmm. High pollen times, well that would be sort of spring and summer, more susceptible to, to, um, to hay fever. Okay. Um, why? Nobody can actually pinpoint it yet. Um, with asthma it, it's suspected that actually the increased risk of suffering cough and cold viruses, mm -hmm. you know, that can go onto the chest, actually set off the asthma. Obviously with the pollen and hay fever the more you're exposed to the more likely you are to trigger mm -hmm. The, the hay fever and people who are already genetically predisposed. With eczema, um, people are still, are, are still looking, but yes, yeah. you're absolutely right, that is what is felt to be okay. uh, the case. If you want to try and reduce your risk of, of eczema in children, obviously, you know, breastfeeding is felt to be uh, protected Better to way. some degree. Okay. The bottom line is avoid the triggers, moisturise as often as you can, and use the relevant treatments that your, your doctor may recommend. Okay, brilliant advice as usual. Thank you so much, Rob. Thank you. We'll see you again next time for another topic. You will indeed. Brilliant. Okay, so do stay tuned because after the break, I'll be speaking to the Gregoire sisters. Don't forget to subscribe to the Chrissy B Show. Always aiming to show you the happier side of life. You can find us on YouTube, Facebook, and Twitter. Welcome back everybody and now I'm with the Gregoire sisters. We're going to be talking about how to give the illusion of your eyes being bigger with Megan here and we're going to be talking skirts and men's fashion. Is that right? Yep. Skirts and men's fashion with Cynthia. Yay. Well, let's start with Megan first. Yes, let's start. So we have um, Goldie here who's my assistant. Everything <laughs> inside of Goldie's head is a tool that's going to be used on my model here uh, for a demonstration on how to make your eyes look larger. Okay, so Goldie is the new member of our team. This is right. Yes. Um, so <laughs> one of the things that we'd like to do is to groom upwards. So you want everything going away from the eye there. So it lifts it kind of up. So you don't want those uh, eyebrow hairs in a direction that won't be lifting. So we want to lift and elevate. And we have light colors. So when you're choosing colors, you want that bright color mm -hmm. as the base because that will brighten and lighten. Okay. And you need that for the base. So you can't use dark colors because if you look uh, or try to remember that darker colors bring a shadow and lighter colors brighten and make larger. So okay. if you want something to go in, then it would be the, the darker colors like you when you're use. doing contouring. Right, and, and if you want mm -hmm. something to pop, so you would put the highlighter, so then that you would want your eyes to pop. So I've chosen a nice shimmery color for the base here. It's a little bit of a goldy just like my mannequin <laughs> head here. And I'm patting that on the base. Now, this is where you, you can get creative. So usually I say feel the crease <clears throat> for that blender color. Mm -hmm. But if you're trying to lift and have the illusion of a larger eye, you can actually create that crease to make that oh. a little bit higher. So you, you're cheating just a little bit, okay. but that's what's gonna give you that extra lift. So I'm just going to 
get a dark contour. And close, Cynthia. You just right above where oh, okay. you see it sinks. I'm gonna make her a new crease. Oh. So that is so clever. It is going to make it wider and larger. So open. So you can see how that actually lifts the eye. Mm -hmm. And when you want to create another illusion on the bottom, we want to use what's Goldie have for us now as our second or third step, a mm -hmm. white eyeliner. And okay. so what you do is you just put this, look up Cynthia, on the waterline and that will create the illusion of the whites of your eyes just going a little further down. Mm. So, giving you more eyeball. Okay. <laughs> but not making you look pop-eyed. <laughs> no. no, okay. Don't do that. So we have also, with the lifting, <laughs> And elevating, we have in Goldie's head a uh -huh. gold pair of Shumara eyelash curlers. So you just want to lift and elevate. Cynthia, I've already curled these lashes, and so they're lifted and elevated again. So if you're like me, you have kind of straight eyelashes. Those are again going to bring the look down. So you want them bright. You want them away from the eyes. So also when you are putting the bottom color on. Look up, Cynthia. You can create that lower lash line just underneath. So you're just a little bit lower and you've got the whites of your oh, eyes. Okay. So again, it's an illusion. Mm -hmm. And obviously, we've got that to brighten it up. Look up. In the white, again, it's bringing that light and that shadow. Mm -hmm. And when you want to concentrate your liner, you do it in the middle. Close. So you, you know how you create on the outer wing to make your eyes look farther kind of apart, get that more um, wider eye look. Now, if you want to lift and elevate, you concentrate in the middle. Okay. And that will create your wide-eyed, bright-eyed look. Brilliant. Beautiful. Beautiful. Okay. Wow, thanks so much for the very handy and sneaky tips. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Goldie. <laughs> Thank you. All right, so now Cynthia. Is it let's even? Yeah, it's done. Yeah, Ooh. she looks good. So okay. let's, let's move over that way now. So we're going to go into the styling part of the show. Okay. Today's fashion segment will be all about skirts that are trending in this autumn season. So the different silhouettes and shapes of skirt for, the, for your figure. So first I'd like to start with our outfits today and what, what I've done is I'll start with Chrissy here. So what I've styled Chrissy as my day look and I've put her in a pencil skirt and I've just started with some Sam Edelman stiletto shoes and you can see this pencil skirt elongates the torso and has this lovely sort of draping detail around the waist, a very feminine look as a pencil skirt. We put tucked in a white button shirt which is lovely for the day look, for an office look. And this one in particular has a tie on it that I've actually just tied, but you could actually let it loose too. It's a very versatile kind of staple for the mm. wardrobe. So how do you like that today? I absolutely Christine? love it, especially the skirt. It's, it's really lovely, comfortable isn't as well. It? Mm -hmm. What you could do with that skirt is you could put like a black cropped blazer with it and change the shoes to black, but mm. you really want to make sure that it would be a cropped blazer because you wouldn't want to hide that lovely detail there. Okay. Okay. Um, with my sister here, she was feeling a bit goth today, so we went rock and roll style with Megan. So starting with the ankle boots, we've got some rag and bone ankle boots and also a leather skirt by Vivian Westwood, asymmetrically cut and draped to the side. And we just put a plain vest with a unicorn uh, necklace. And this is something here, this jacket is called a laser cut jacket. Now the detailing in this jacket is something that's going to be around for spring, summer 15 as well. And it's just this intricate laser that's doing the cutting, allowing for very small precision in detail. So watch for that on the high street. 
uh, with myself, and you'll see this trending pretty much every autumn season, is the tartan, at, or plaid as we call it in Canada. And so it's, it's a suit by Vivian Westwood again. I've just paired it with Mary Jane open toe uh, heels. And because it's asymmetrical, so the skirt comes down on the one side, that is, you know, sort of a, a trend for the season. Also, this has a, a neck detail on it that you can actually open the jacket and actually Love style that. it another way. Love that. Okay. And with the hair, I've just done it asymmetrical, low ponytail to sort of off balance the, the point of the skirt. So cool tips there. And what do we have on the rail? Okay, on the rail, I just have a couple different styles of skirts that you might run into um, and how to style them up. So for this one, this is the mini skirt. This one is done by Paul and Joe. And if you can take a closer look at this one, it's just got little flecks of sparkle in it. And as we get closer and closer to Christmas, you want to add some of this to your wardrobe. Can we get a close up of that? There you go. Just okay. a bit of flex. So you can put, you know, you can just mm. put this with knitwear. Uh, mini skirts are great for short people who want to look a little bit taller as well. So that's good. Um, we see a lot of tweed uh, in stores right now. This one's red, so a festive color. Be on the lookout for that. So this one here is just sort of like a simple A-line skirt. It's just very simple to wear. Uh, suits most body types. So you can see that there. It's just not a mini, but not a mid-length skirt. Also, this one here done by uh, Diane von Furstenberg, very much the same idea. It has just a bit of an A-line to it, just really easy to wear, really feminine. Uh, I have a vintage piece here by Burberry. This one is a tartan skirt. Again, it's kind of got that high cinched waist with a belt. And you would also take maybe a shirt like Chrissy's and tuck it in, or you can pair this with. What knitwear. about footwear for that one? Would you say this one here? I usually wear this. This one's a tough one, actually. You could do a black, or else I have these color of Mary Janes that mm -hmm. I put with them. But I think it looks really cute with a Mary Jane shoe. Okay. I'm glad you brought up footwear, Chrissy, because I was actually going to say if you wear a pencil skirt, it's very important not to wear flats because you wear a pencil skirt to elongate and be taller. Mm -hmm. So you wouldn't want to just put your, your okay. feet flat to the ground. So just two more kinds of pencil skirts. These are actually, this one's not really, a, this one's just a straight cut. This one is a pencil skirt. They're both done by Nicole Miller. And if you look at the, the patterns on them, we've got sequins and more sequins. So you're going to see a lot of this as we get closer to Christmas. Love those. Okay. Um, this one here is probably just a staple for any wo woman's wardrobe. It's just a black pencil skirt. And there's just so many different ways you could wear this. Pair it with a crop top um, or knitwear, or you can tuck in a shirt like, like Chrissy's wearing today. Do you have time for another mm -hmm. one? Okay. Yeah, um, this last piece here is by Young, Fabulous and Broke. And this one here, if you can see, it's asymmetrical and it's got this really high slit in it, but it also has an underskirt. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of like a skirt of many lengths and different cuts. And it's also, as you can see, it's not structured. It's just like really like flowy material. So this one here is more of like, a, uh, like an evening skirt yeah, kind okay. of thing. Okay, so that's, that's actually it for this week. Girls, thank you so much for your wonderful segments as usual. Thank you. Thanks. Alrighty, and they will be back again with us next week. So do stay tuned because after the break, I'll be answering a question from a viewer and also we have more news with the lovely Excel. Don't forget to subscribe to The Chrissy B Show. Always aiming to show you the happier side of life. You can find us on YouTube, Facebook and Twitter. Welcome back to the show. So now it's time for me to answer a question from a viewer. And this one's from Sharon and she says, Hi Chrissy, I recently started seeing a young man and everything was going fine until one day he just started to ignore me and he would not answer my calls or my text. I heard from a friend that he was having a few problems, which was nothing to do with me. So I text just to make sure he was okay. He thanked me for my concern, but still that was it. I understand people go through things, but I could not understand if it was me who had done something at the time and I was left feeling really rejected and worthless. Now everything is okay with him supposedly, he still has not contacted me to apologize. So now I think when I see him, it will be uncomfortable. Do I say hello or just ignore him, leaving it up to him if he wants to talk to me or not? What would you do, Chrissy? Now, Sharon, my darling, I'm going to be really, really honest with you here. 
I know you're a bit upset about what's happened, but you know, at the beginning, from the beginning, it doesn't sound like it got very serious anyway, because you said you only started seeing him recently. And I think you need to be quite realistic about things. If he's not answering your calls and he's not responding to your texts, maybe he's not actually that interested in you. And even if he was going through some kind of issue in his life and he was, you know, feeling close to you or he, he valued your opinion, he would have contacted you even though he was going through something like that. So if I were in your shoes and I'd called and I'd text and I've got no response, then honestly, I would just leave it. If he contacts you, you can say to him, you know, what he did or what he didn't do, you know, upset you. But I think, you know, I think you have to be honest with him, with him, take it from there, you know, if he does contact you. But honestly, it doesn't sound like he's very interested. And I just think you should move on because there are plenty more fish in this sea. And I don't think you should let anyone make you feel worthless or rejected. So I would say also learn to love yourself more. OK, so I hope that's helped Sharon. And if you guys have a question at home, you can email me on chris at chrissybshow.tv. Anything you'd like to add to that, Excel? No, Were didn't. you actually listening? No, 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 <laughs> oh, getting get me back because I wasn't listening to I you know. earlier. <laughs> well, no, I was listening. No, it is important. I mean, sometimes, I suppose like when you watch the movie where you kind of see one person's kind of having going through a few things that make the other person think as though they didn't want to get in touch. So maybe he is going through stuff that has made him not get in touch. But I would say kind of get it off your mind. If he contacts you, he contacts you. If he doesn't, he doesn't. Mm. And that's that's how I would say it as well because it could very well be he is going through something that has made him not get into. Well, apparently he's not anymore, and he still hasn't contacted. Him. Well, mm, yeah. well, but anyway, I'll cheer you up with some news here. <laughs> um, well, this is a good start. Anyone who's been to a comedy gig knows, you know, you can kind of come away from the the event feeling as if oh, this place wasn't really, you know, the comedy wasn't really comedy, you know, it wasn't really funny. So now a club in Barcelona have come up with the wonderful innovative idea of facial recognition software that is put in front of everybody's seat that it <laughs> it actually tells when you smile or laugh at a comedian's joke. Oh, so, oh my god, that's a bit spooky. Well, it says each laugh is charged at 30 cents, which is about 23 pence, with a cap at 24 euros, which is about 18 pounds, with owners hoping to restore audience numbers because government taxes on theatre tickets has caused them to plummet. So this is Spain deciding that they're going to take facial recognition. I mean, I have, I have, I have some pictures here. It's quite hilarious. The, the, it kind of breaks it down. Picture number one sort of breaks it down with the, um, what, what the charges are and stuff. And then the second picture shows a woman who's actually um, been... There you go. At the moment, she's clocked up 50 laughs and she's currently going to be paying 15 euros. Oh. But if she laughs anymore, obviously that would go up. But they cap it at 24 euros. So she okay. wouldn't have to, yeah. So this is pay per laugh. And um, yes, so I think that's quite interesting because I think people just go just to but, play but you a see, game. You see, somebody like me, I would like to dare that system and just sit there going, Yeah, I know. And you would do that. Is it funny? And I'd be like, going, <laughs> So if you don't laugh at all, you don't pay anything. If you don't it? laugh, you don't pay. Nothing. That's pretty much what that means, as okay. far as I'm concerned. So, <laughs> well, I didn't laugh. So. That's quite clever, actually, because I think people just want to do it just for the challenge, exactly. not laughing. Exactly. And then... That, you know, maybe that might be, I don't know, do it for charity or something. <laughs> Tips yeah. for anybody out there. Well, um, moving on to something that's actually quite dear now, I have to say. Um, have you ever been, at any point in time, helped a friend or relative give birth? No. Would you ever no. do it? Would you ever, ever not do it if you're in that position where somebody's you're stuck on a remote island well, somewhere? Well, if there's not, no one else, obviously I'd help, but it's not something Good. I aspire to do. Thank you very much. But imagine doing that at the age of nine. No. And actually, this oh. is the second time this nine-year-old is doing it. Because the first time Francesca Goodby is her name, she is destined to become the UK's youngest midwife after this because she <laughs> delivered both of her sisters. No. She first helped her mum Kay deliver Roizen two years ago, so when she was seven, delivered her deliver her first her young you know first younger sister with um, her her mum gave birth on the bathroom floor. Then more recently, she helped out with the delivery of I think it's called. Swan. But did they want did the mum want to give birth at home? Well, I think or was it was it just like didn't have time to go to the hospital. I think it was a case of not being able to get to hospital on time because oh. it says here um, she was. She says hey, she re the mum K says she was very proud of her. She was the calmest person in the house. She kept telling me to stay calm and helping me to breathe. 
For when she realized the baby was being born the wrong way, she was able to hold the baby's head and keep it safe. Maybe the baby was born face down or something, I don't know what, but the mm. head was out, but the, the baby was in a quite delicate way. So her dad had to look after Roisin, which was the first one she had given, helped deliver, in the other room, so that Francesca was shouting through to tell him what was going on, and she would let him know when the head was out and say everything was okay. So the husband was now on the phone to the 999 operator, relaying the information that Francesca was telling him. Oh, blimey, what mess. So she was like a little midwife, <laughs> Dad, so-and-so's happening, and he was following it up yeah. with, the, with the 999. And the family who delivered, um, sorry, the family delivered the, I think it's called Swa, this is an Irish name, I do apologize if I'm not saying it right. I think it's Suarez. Before the real midwives came, they were quite impressed with what Francesca mm. had done. And um, she said, I knew what to do from the last time I helped mommy to have a baby. As soon as mommy said she was pregnant again, I was preparing just in case it happened Aww, again. Bless. I just had to stay calm and I kept bringing towels and kept telling daddy what was going on. I held the head while she came out. It wasn't scary. I was excited and glad to help. Aww. It's a very brave well, nine-year-old. She might well be trained now. I know, one. but she wants to be an artist when she grows up, oh. she says, yeah. Paint pictures of people giving birth, who knows? Of course, <laughs> lovely. <laughs> well, this is hilarious. A flock of sheep spent an afternoon stumbling around and making strange noises after accidentally feasting on, a, on thousands of pounds worth of cannabis. They stumbled upon the bag because somebody had dropped a bag on the farm. And so the pig, the sheep went round there and they were basically munching through the oh bag. So no. she, the, the farmer noticed, it's like, hold on a minute, why are they eating stuff out of black bin bags? Only to realise that... Um, so what happened to them? Um, she said they, they seem to be fine, but she'll, she'll let us know what happens to the meat. Oh, right. As in, obviously, I'm sure they were digested, but I think she was just trying to be smart. If someone mm. ate their meat and got high, I doubt it. That, that would be... I but something must have happened to the animals, like... Well, apparently they were fine. They were just basically, they just, they were very happy sheep do you know, after do you know, eating. Do you know why I say that? Because <laughs> I remember watching this, I can't remember what the wildlife film is, but right. I watched this wildlife film with my dad. It's absolutely hilarious. There's this tree in Africa, mm. and when the fruit uh, gets really ripe, it drops to the ground, but it's really like the, the animals, all the animals that came around to eat would get completely drunk. Oh, it must have fermented, and you saw, yeah. yeah. You saw these elephants, like going sidewards and like these hyenas oh, and not these hyenas it. sorry these like baboons on their backs laughing it was so funny no way all of the animals got drunk without even giraffe it was i've got to get that film again because it's hilarious. just really really funny <laughs> i would be cracking up with so i can't that. believe that nothing happened to the sheep well hopefully because it, because she discovered it before before I, I suppose she discovered it before the bag was emptied maybe but um oh no actually they had gone through um seven bags of it so when she went down to collect it, she kind of found oh, out no. that. So I don't know how many bags were dumped in the first place, but he then said officers of the police were called and officers took away the remainder of the drugs. But they said they could face problems finding where it came from because the sheep had eaten much of the evidence. <laughs> well, <laughs> oh, no. a, a, a bit of news I want to squeeze in there if I have. Um, do I still have time? Yes. No, no one's talking to me. Lovely. Jobly, I think we do. OK. 30 seconds, my darling. All right, then. Well, a, a smarty pants who decided to taunt the police on Facebook. You see, these people never oh, learn. Dear. Criminals never learn. He actually went on Facebook because after um, face, the, the, the police from Christchurch posted on Facebook to say he was wanted and post his picture up saying, you know, have you seen this man? And I have the photo, and of course it's a picture of Samuel Evan Lake, and basically he has a tattoo on his neck, and the police said, you know, we, could you please let us know if you've seen him. He then posted on the page to say, I need a new mugshot, I look too ugly. So of course they responded and said, come and see us, and we will arrange at no extra cost. And of course, a day later, he was located because someone said, yes, I've seen that ugly mug, and he was arrested arrested okay so yeah. thank you so much for the news we do have to dash and go but i'd just like to leave something with you a thought for today's show if something doesn't work out your way don't get stressed about it dust yourself off and move on to better things do hope you've enjoyed today's program and if you want more information about the program you can visit the website chrissybshow.tv and don't forget you can contact me anytime on chris at chrissybshow.tv and i do mean anytime because i check my emails quite late <laughs> See you again next time. Bye-bye for now.